So Honda Big Bikes are known to be reliable, versatile, and comfortable. And you know what they say, you meet the nicest people on a Honda. Now those words, nice, comfort, reliability, versatility, not exactly words I would typically use to describe a motorcycle, or maybe reliability. Today, we have the 2021 Honda CB1000R. Let's find out more about it in this episode of Beyond the Ride. So let's start out with the aesthetics first. This is Honda's Neo Sports Cafe um, leader bike. And I don't really want to call it a retro because it doesn't look too retro to me. But I do love the way it looks, you know I mean? The, the lines, I, I get this, it's bulky. It's nice and muscular at the same time. I appreciate the look. I, li I love the single-sided swing arm. I always like a single-sided swing arm. And this one, Honda did deliver on this bike. So the looks is definitely something that I appreciate. Uh, on this Honda big bike. So over on the rear, as I mentioned, it is a single-sided swing arm, which I enjoy. And I also do like that Honda decided to take away the rear fender, which you typically see on naked bikes and other bikes right about here. But they did put this, which I'm not too fond of, but it is useful, right? I mean, you don't want uh, the water on the ground to be splashing on your, on your back. So you do still need this. And you still need a place to put your license plate. Now, powering the bike is a 998cc liquid-cooled dual overhead cam inline four-cylinder engine that makes 144 horsepower at 10,500 RPM and 100 newton meters of torque at 8,000 RPM. You get a 310 millimeter double disc with two-channel ABS for your front brakes, while the rear is a 256 millimeter single disc. The front suspension is a Showa upside-down fork, while you get an adjustable monoshock at the back. The front tire is 120 by 70, while the rear is 190 by 55, both on 17s. So the 2021 model, Honda finally updated the dash of the bike. As you can see, it's a 5-inch TFT display. And I do like the layout. It is pretty simple and easy to read. And as you can see, you have the riding modes right there, which you can adjust. You have standard, rain, user, and sport. Let's keep it on standard for now because... Uh, I'm going to talk about it later. <laughs> she is a little bit of a gas guzzler, so let's keep it on standard at the moment. Now, I do want to say that there have been instances when I've been using this bike for the past couple of days where I don't really see the dash under direct sunlight. Now, when you're riding, yes, you don't really look at the dash that often anyway, but it's something that uh, to consider because some people need to see it, right? They need to see the speed and changing the modes and under really extreme bright sunlight, especially here in the Philippines, sometimes you don't see it. Now, speaking of the controls that you have right here on the left side of the handlebar, it's relatively standard, but I do have issues with the placement of the horn and the indicators. I tend to kind of confuse them a little bit. Now, keep in mind, I have been using the bike for several days, and even today, I still kind of mess this up a little bit. And I have a theory about this, why this is. Because Japanese people don't really use the horn too much, uh, similar to the uh, Yamaha XSR. It's kind of so far away from them that you tend to not use it. But here in the Philippines, you kind of need it pretty often. The wet weight of the bike is 212 kilograms and it actually handles the weight really well. You don't feel it too much and it makes it a very comfortable bike to take on the, on, on the city streets here in the Philippines, especially here in Manila where it's pretty traffic. And I would go as far as saying that this might be the best liter bike for riding around the city on the daily. The size of the tank is 16 liters, which is pretty standard for these type of bikes. And Honda claims that you can get 20 kilometers per liter, which is absolutely not true, at least for most people that I know. I got closer to about 17 or 16 kilometers per liter, and I was being relatively friendly with the throttle. The seat height is 830 millimeters. I'm five foot six with a 764 millimeter inseam. 
and I am tippy toed on the bike, but it is not an issue for me. And I honestly don't think it would be an issue for most riders out there, at least maybe intermediate riders. Even though you are tiptoeing, it shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> The screaming inline four. I probably burned about 500 pesos worth of gas right there. Okay, let's start out with the ergonomics. Right? The ergonomics are pretty comfortable, but I do feel the pegs to be a little bit more rear set uh, than I had expected. And it's also a little bit higher. So it's kind of aggressive in that sense, but still relatively comfy. I do feel like I'm perched up pretty high up though. The throttle response is pretty good. No slack on the throttle at all. And it does basically what you tell it to do. And it's probably the most polite leader bike there is and I, I don't feel like I need to baby it at all the suspension is pretty soft which makes it nice and comfy but when I took this out on some twisty roads the other day I did feel that it was a little bit too bouncy for my liking it didn't feel as planted as what I've gotten used to yes the suspension wasn't set up for my weight uh, so maybe that had something to do with it but it's not a bike I would ride super aggressively on some twisty roads or on the racetrack. I think it's a pretty good bike for some decent um, distance riding because of how comfy it is. The suspension does soak up the bumps on the roads very, very well. And I guess it's really difficult uh, to get the best of both worlds, right? This might be the best leader bike to ride around the city on the daily. It's easy to maneuver, it's pretty light, and the engine doesn't get too hot at all. Now, I was stuck in some slow moving traffic uh, the other day as well, when I was bringing it home from, from Quezon City, and I didn't think it was an issue whatsoever. The only problem with using this bike on the daily is that she is a little bit thirsty, as I mentioned a while ago. I mean, it's a four cylinder MC, so you can expect it to use up fuel pretty quick. Man, it's really not jerky at all, unlike some of the competition of the bike, which makes it really easy to ride. Now, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's for beginners because this is very powerful and it's still got a lot of punch, but I really don't think it's gonna scare an intermediate rider when they first get on the bike. And I do think it's a great bike to consider if you have been riding for, you know, maybe a year and you would use it as a your commuter bike, your daily bike, but want to go on the occasional breakfast ride in the mornings. I, I wouldn't recommend it for super aggressive riding, carving up twisties or canyon roads or track use. I mean, you can, but yeah, I would prefer other bikes for that type of riding. Now, when you think about the competition of the bike, as I mentioned the MT-10 a while ago, you could also consider maybe the Suzuki Katana. And of the three of them, I think the Katana is the best looking. And I think that the, um, the MT-10 is the most fun. This one is kind of like in the middle, right? I mean, it's, when you think about it, it's not the most fun. It's not the best looking. It's always just there in the middle. Something that I really do wish that this bike had, and I'm sure you can add it, um, later on after you purchase it, but I wish that it would come with a quick shifter. I mean, it, it really should. I mean, it, it, you can add it, but it's something that sh they should have just included already. So those words that I mentioned earlier, let's, uh, let's, let's grade the bike on those. Is it reliable? Yes. Five out of five. Is it versatile? Sort of. Uh, I'd, I'd give it maybe a three out of five. Is it comfy? Absolutely, five out of five in the comfortable um, category. And do you really meet nice people on a Honda? Well, since I'm riding one right now, I'd like to think yes. So five out of five as well for do you meet the nicest people on the Honda? So in conclusion, 
If there ever was a later bike that you would introduce to your parents, this would be it. It's not the most fun, and in my opinion, it's not the best looking, but it is the nicest and the most polite. It's kinda vanilla, but there are people out there who really love vanilla, such as myself. And if you're one of those people as well, well, the starting price tag of the 2021 Honda CB1000R is at 865,000 Philippine pesos. For more information about this bike and other MCs out there, log on to www.motodeal.com.ph. This has been Gene Orfino. Hope you guys enjoyed going beyond the ride.